Hello YouTube. In this video, we're going to install multiply mods on my Warren Trident. I own those mods for almost a half a year and because I was distracted with other hobbies and uh, in life stuff, I wasn't able to install those. Let me just show you what uh, we are going to do in this video. The first mod will be to use those clips to hold the panels that I'm constantly removing. I will need to print about five or six of those, printed a few of them in a size to make sure that size is uh, fitting my uh, thickness of the panels and the printer. And um, three millimeters in my case, the size of this clip and um, turning knob. And this is the very simple mod. I will print out of PLA because it's super easy to print with PLA and I have ready to go printer right now while I'm gonna work on a Trident other mods. The next mod, CNC were on top. I think this is a five volt version of the top. It's fully aluminum piece, comes with the wire, some bolts and the top itself. So the main reason why I want to switch over using a top because I don't really like the clicky prop. I found myself adjusting the offset too often and the assembly of the clicky quite complicated and there's a lot of pieces that can go wrong, a lot of adjustments. I just really want to use very simple solution where it doesn't matter if I change the nozzle or my printer wasn't used for quite some time. The printer no need any adjustments and based on my research warrant tab is supposed to be one of those solutions because you're pretty much measuring the printing surface directly with the nozzle hope this one be a bit better than inductive probe otherwise i'll just go back using inductive probe clicky probe it's not my cup of tea and it doesn't work for me the way i would like it to be very inconsistent yes it's cheap mostly printable but as i said per my experience it's not consistent where i can just push the start button and start printing. The next piece will be TFT screen by Big Tritage. This one is a 35 SPI screen and I'm gonna use it with Big Tritage board. I decided to switch back over my Dragon hotend from using a Riva. Riva is kind of a nice ecosystem, but it's lacking of a flow I want to print quite fast on my Warren Trident, uh, what's why I want to use Dragon High Flow. Here you can see I'm using 0.4 millimeters high flow bondage nozzle and I hope to get about 25 to 30 cubic millimeters a second flow out of this hot end. And as my tool headboard supports PT1000, that's what I got off Amazon, never used PT1000 on my printer, that's what I want to try. This tool head assembled with slice engineering born nitrate paste and the first time I have used it, I made a huge mess. This is very liquidy. When you push it out of the syringe, be careful, don't push too hard because I messed up everything in my desk and probably lost a third of this paste just because I didn't expect it to be too liquidy. Here you can see I have used it between PT1000 and my heating core and I used it between my nozzle and heating block. I don't think you have to use it here, I just put it there because why not? I have plenty of this and I don't really think you guys need it. So whatever, I have it already. This assembly is ready to go and let's see what I have for the motherboard. Big Tritage supported this video and they have sent me a new board. This is Manta M8P version 1.8. They also have sent me the CB model to be used in this build. Here it is. You can see the model installed right here. This board is very close to what I have right now. I have Octopus and this board is supposed to be pretty much the same with a lot of extra features and opportunity to run the Linux directory from the CB1 that we have right on the board. So the setup will be significantly cleaner. The quality of this board is very good as any other big 3 product, wherever I bought from them myself. And now we got to my 3D printer. Those guys will be printed on Warren switch wire. I have a little bit of PLA left over. So the goal is remove the tension from the belts, disassemble the whole tool head, rebuild it, and I will probably not gonna show you how I'm working on it, I'm just gonna show like between the results. So I have disassembled the printer, put Coyote Club top in place, 
the belts are a little bit longer than needs to be. I probably will cut them later. Also, those two screws are super easy to strip. I stripped one of them on the bottom without putting any pressure. Either a thread was very bad or I put too much pressure. This is actually very bad that it was so easy to strip. At this point, I have used thread blocker out there. So that way it will hold in place. But guys, be careful. Don't tie those screws too tight. And now printer is preheating for the first print. I still have to remove remaining parts and it is going to be pretty much ready. I have removed all the clippy from unnecessary macrosses and made sure all of the settings are properly set. Well, let's see how it's gonna go. This is the first layer. First print, I have did the probe calibration with paper. This is the most important part of my two layer print test. I'm checking that lines does not have space between them and I also check that lines are not over squished. And the second layer usually shows you any imperfections due to the first layer. So far it's looking good. I probably need to lower down the nozzle a little bit. Sometimes I cancel print right in the middle of the first layer, just peel it off and check how well it's squished, how well it's placed together, but so far it looks very good. Let's peel off the layer and see how well it looks like. So as I mentioned, sometimes I like to peel the first layer just to verify that first layer is good and there is no extra spaces between the lines and you can see it's very glossy and I can't almost feel the lines. There is no over squish and the bottom looks very good. No light is shining through. And now I'm going to print the same thing, but two layers just to verify the result is consistent. Also, I have printed all of the locks for the panels and those are really good. I really like those, super easy to use. That purple KVP ABS plastic is fit perfectly the build, but I really hate printing with it because it's curling a lot. And I might replace it with that black sparkle ABS. I still will have the purple accents and doors and everything, but probably will use those clips all over the printer because it's so much more convenient to remove the panels. The guy who made those have multiple sizes. Depends on the thickness of your panels. You can pretty much print for everything you want and they work amazing. Really recommend those. I have started the print for my GFT screen and soon we'll have a base and after the base accents then I'll try to install it. While well, 3D printer is printing, I have prepared a little bench here on which I will try to configure as much of the board as possible before installing the board. Here is my screen. I purchased some of the SD cards. You can see a few of them out there. This is not an advertisement. I use XT30 with literal alligator clips to power the board through my uh, power supply. As you've seen on Instagram, experience doesn't teach me anything. I already shorted those before but it is what it is. I just like this approach way more. So let's get into it. This is first part after we got top installed. Under certain angles, you can probably see the layer lines, but this was printed in some cases with speed of 250, 300, and I think for such speeds, it is very impressive, the quality is quite good. So I have finished preparing all the parts to be installed on 3D printer. The board have all of the bridges installed for voltage, for fans, and on the other side, for UART mode for each of the drivers. SPI screen is configured, CAN bus is enabled. All of the 3D prints came out nicely, since I installed War on Top, like I have printed probably six or seven parts, on none of them I had to adjust Z offset and they came out perfect. So that's what I want from my printer. I want it to be consistent. You just push print and print. 
Clicky prop never gave me such consistent result. I had to adjust Z offset quite often, maybe between two or three parts, and it was very flanky. I'm so far very happy. To get CB1 working, I had to just configure Wi-Fi in config file, and then in environment files, I had to enable SPI for screen and built-in CAN bus model. They both work on SPI bus. What cool about their Linux image is that everything came configured out of the box. You just install the image, put the configuration for the Wi-Fi, enable devices you want on SPI bus, then flash the firmware on the board and your CAN bus is working right away. You don't need to create network interface or custom scripts or anything like that. That is uh, very impressive, very nice and working. Let's install everything on my 3D printer and I will show a few steps between the process. I have finished installing the motherboard. Don't ask me about wiring. The main reason why I keep wires long because I all the time do the mods on my printer for YouTube videos. And each time my wires short, I have to rewire everything. That's why I kept them long as possible in case I will have to do other mod that will require longer wires. This is kind of a clean, but if you don't like it, I don't judge you. I don't like it either, but it's very convenient if I want to change something. Now I will power the system, prepare firmware, and we're going to print something. All the prints I have removed from the printer. We have new motherboard, we have war on top with new hot end. I no longer need 5 volts because CB1 power directly from the motherboard from Manta M8P. New screen, we no longer need clicky prop and some extra wires that were used to power motors. And here how end result is looking like. We set up a screen. It actually was quite easy. I have rewired the camera. I installed the wire on top. And on top of the printer, we have new latches that holding a top panel. And overall, this build became way, way cleaner than it used to be. I'm very pleased with the result and grateful to Big 3 Tech sponsoring this video. The build is looking very clean at this point. I'm done. May the force be with you guys. See you at the next one. Bye bye.